referee, it's Okorach Michael. Good, steady feet. Manage Okorach with the wrong ball. Olet. Oh, good dummy there coming in from Okorach. He's got space, he's got acres. He backs himself, he backs himself. He's got the leg. And it's a brilliant try coming in from Philip Wokaraj. You got that gold and a rugby boy. PW15. Where does one begin when talking about a talent as mercurial as this one? I guess we take it from the top. Philip Okorach was born 25 years ago to Miss Ayot Lillian Rose and the late Jalobo Serafino of Nakawa, a suburb of Kampala in Uganda. Growing up in Nakawa, Philip went to Mbuya Primary School and then later to Chiswa Primary School. Like many boys his age, Philip's first love was football, but this was because he was highly exposed to it as in Uganda it's played on every corner in every open space and at every school and is literally the most popular sport. Philip claims to have had the skill for it. Well maybe he did, maybe he didn't, maybe we'll never find out. With Chad on the rugby club and Kampala rugby clubs in proximity to where Philip grew up, he got attracted to rugby from watching it on the way home from school every day. He and his peers would stop and watch and gradually began to understand and love the game. The number of school-going children getting interested in the sport prompted Chad on the rugby club to initiate the Totos rugby program. This program gave all interested kids an opportunity to get involved. And this was Philp's gateway into rugby. Philp fell in love with the program more than just for the sport but also for the fact that it allowed him to interact with people of a different race. The white people. Well, say what you will, but this was a privilege at that time. The white people eventually introduced tag rugby into the schools nearby, including Philp's school. And this made him love the game even more. Yes, because he got to play it more, but also because tag rugby could be played by girls too. Philip had already been exposed on his walks home, so he didn't struggle much in learning the rules and the basics when playing at school. He even goes on to say it made for very interesting sessions. From Chiswa Primary School, Philip Walker joined City High School, where he did his O-level, before joining Hanna Mixed International School for his A-level, and this is where he fathered his rugby career. Phil Wokorach had his name etched into the echelons of Ugandan rugby in the year 2010 with Hanna International Mixed School at the School Rugby Sevens. There was this particular weekend at Namiriango College where he made easy work of an already renowned Justin Kimono turning him inside out with his signature side steps and making it rain tries. By the end of it all, the name or juice, which was his nickname, was well known and feared among schools. The next year in 2011, Philip wasn't done tormenting his peers yet when he led Hannah to their first ever school's rugby crown alongside the creme de la creme of the game, such as the current Ugandan fly half Ivan Magomo. Kenya's Joshua Kisanga, Ronnie Musoke, to mention but a few. He graduated from high school in 2011 and he was ready to set the professional world alight. And where else to do it than where it all began? Chadondo Rugby Club. 2012 saw the birth of the best and most entertaining fullback in Ugandan rugby and he started at the second best team at Chad Dondo Rugby Club, the Buffaloes. Much as it would be considered destiny that his professional career started in the same place he fell in love with the game, Phil simply had the skill to belong at the top. So one year later, he made the step up and joined the MTN Heathens. 
In 2014, Phil Bokorach earned his first national collab to the Sevens. This was another big door that opened for him. He was contacted by Cabras Sugar RFC from Kenya after the Masaku Sevens where he impressed. He had a tryout with the Kakamega side but decided to stay in Uganda to complete his studies and also he wasn't ready to leave the Hiddens yet. He was not ready to leave home. He went on to have a pretty successful career with the Heathens, decorated with two league titles and three Uganda Cup titles. The Cabras chairman, however, was rather persistent and maintained contacts, and again invited him to take a look at the facilities and watch a training session. Phil was very impressed by the competitiveness of the group at this point, and it began to register in his mind that it could possibly be a good move for his career. He was then given an offer to join the club on a pro or semi-pro basis which was beyond his expectation in his own words. It was a dream come true. For a young man it was obviously a tough decision to leave but he did it anyway for the good of his career. Phil reached the top of his physical abilities in Kenya being exposed to a higher level of competition, a more passionate and demanding fan base, improved fitness and conditioning routines and facilities, all making him tougher and fine-tuning his skills. Leaving his boyhood playground might have been the best thing he ever did for himself. Regarding his current move to Bourgeois in France, he said, I have always wanted to go pro in a top league in the world. I'm not there yet, but this is a step in the right direction. The Lord has given me an opportunity and all I have to do is perform to the best of my ability, help my team, train hard and he will do the rest like he has always done. On an international level, Philip does not seem to think he has performed as well as he could, but he is happy with the last three years. He has gotten to represent the country in tournaments such as the Gold Cup, the Victoria Cup increasing his number of test matches. It is his prayer that more top tier teams could come touring against lower tier African sides. But until his prayer comes true, Philip Ojus Wokorach can enjoy his so far successful career. Number eight and eight nine connection. Uh, still they it. look to build patiently building, played it to Wokorach. Wokorach slotting in number 10 position. Excellent dummy. Oh. Oh. 